Welcome to our first module uh, that is dedicated to the introduction of quantum, uh, uh, quantum algorithms and a recap of linear algebra. In this lecture, we're going to talk about vectors and more specifically, we'll introduce the Dirac notation that we'll be using throughout the course. The Dirac notation concerns ve uh, vectors in C to the N, and this is also the kind of vectors that we'll talk about uh, throughout this, uh, the, the whole quantum algorithms course. Now, uh, it turns out um, all you have to do, if you're not so familiar with uh, ve uh, complex vector spaces and, and you, know, you think of vectors more as a real uh, vector spaces, Everything you have, all you have to remember is that everything works the same in the sense that addition of vectors is coordinate wise, while multiplication by a scalar, which in our case is always a complex number, also happens coefficient wise. Okay, so these are sort of like the elementary arithmetic properties on vectors. The Dirac notation, uh, or sometimes called the bracket notation, uh, is concerns the input, so an input vector, say y1 to yn, uh, a column vector will be what is called the ket, okay? So here you take your y1 to n, put them, and so the ket notation, uh, so bar and y and then that angle is going to be the column vector y1 to yn. The bra notation, so for the for coefficient x1 to xn is going to be this time a row vector and the entries, you got to pay attention to that, the entries are going to be the complex conjugates where, um, and this is just a, a quick recap, a complex conjugates for a complex number of the form a plus ib, its complex conjugate we note c, denote c star is a minus ab. Okay, now there is a very important uh, special case of this direct notation where we sort of contract a, a con slight contraction of that notation. Previously, what we described were uh, uh, vectors, okay? So we had entries that we put in the bra or kets, but if we want to put a number, it will correspond to the i, so number i in a, a bra or kets is going to be the ith vector of the canonical basis, okay? So this is what it means to have the i here. Now, let's give some examples. Uh, counterintuitively, zero is not the zero vector because the i is from index from zero to n minus one. So the vector zero, right, ket, zero in C2 is going to be the first vector of the canonical basis. Now, there's a little bit of ambiguity here in the sense that zero will denote the first vector of the canonical basis, but it does not, this notation does not really uh, specify which vector spaces we're working in. And in particular, the first vector of C4 is also going to be denoted by zero, but of course is not the same vector. In this case, it's going to be this vector here, okay? So you got to pay attention to context and whenever there's a potential for ambiguity, I'll try to specify the, the ambient vector space, okay? Now, of course, another perhaps counterintuitive fact is that if you look at uh, three, for example, three does not have three as a coefficient, right? It's just the fourth vector of the canonical basis, zero, one, two, three, okay? And then five is, going, 5 is going to be, so then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the sixth vector of the canonical basis. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, okay? So these are a few of the examples of what this uh, notation means. Now, the uh, import sort of uh, operation uh, that we'll be doing here is uh, inner product, okay, and I'll mention outer products too, but we'll be uh, talking about it again in the, uh, the, the lecture on matrices. So inner products are what you think they are, so they're denoted with this bra ket, so x, y, and you have, so the only important thing of course is that here our row vector has the complex conjugates, okay, and the inner product that we're 
that we're um, um, that we're used to, and you'll notice that, of course, whoops, that x x is going to be the sum of the x i square, and that is by definition the two norm square. Okay, so we're going to be also talking about a norm and what follows. And the outer product of two uh, n, uh, dimension n vector is going to be that n by n matrix here, where the coefficient ij is xi yj star. Okay? So, uh, some examples. So, here uh, we're going to be uh, going really quick on those examples. Okay? So, it's in a product. The only thing, of course, is here it gives us an excuse to manipulate the Dirac notation. Okay? So, uh, 1 times 3, and that should be 10, okay? Now, if I throw in some complex numbers, what do I get here? 3 times 1 plus 2 times 2i plus 1 times 3, and that is 6 plus i4. Now, a little salty here. The complex number is in the bra, and in the bra, things are... Um, uh, conjugated. So what it means is that I have 3 times 1, something that of course did not appear before. Okay, so minus 2i times 2 plus 1 times 3, and that will be this time 6 minus i4. Now, because they're the vectors of the canonical basis, the ith vector, the, the, the inner product of itself, is one while the product with the inner product with other vectors of the canonical basis because it's an orthonormal basis we'll say more on that uh, very soon these are zero okay now outer products like i said we we'll just create the matrix with vector with coefficient ij so here for example what we have is this matrix okay here, what we'll have is the following matrix. And then ij, this is going to be the matrix that has the only non-zero coefficient at index ij. And in particular, of course, this thing here is a fancy way to talk about the identity matrix. We're anticipating a little bit here on the chapter on matrices, so I'll go admittedly a little fast. Now, um, the very important property of vectors is the uh, in the scope of, of this course is their orthogonality and the property that a basis can be orthonormal. So being orthonormal for a family of vector, basis or otherwise, of basis of CN or otherwise, is that they're orthogonal if their inner product is zero. And, and if in addition, those the vectors are of norm one, then we talk about an orthonormal family of vectors. Now, it turns out that orthonormal vectors are always linearly independent, okay? So they're always a basis of whatever vector space they spin. And in particular, if you have N of them, N orthonormal vectors, a family of n orthonormal vectors, then you know that you have a basis of c to the n. Now, why do I care about orthonormal vectors? One thing that I really like about it is that it's going to be very easy to decompose an input vector that I know to be a linear combination of uh, vectors of an orthonormal basis with respect to uh, those vectors, so finding the coefficients you know, in, in, in the linear combination. That's really important because when, when you're talking about, it can be really annoying if, for example, you're looking at k vectors and, and you, so you have the linear system with, with uh, dimension k to solve in general. But here, what you'll have to do is only k, um, um, uh, k inner products, okay? So if you want to find the coefficients, for example, lambda 1, uh, of an, an input 
uh, psi, which is a linear combination of our psi1 vectors, psi1, psi k, that are an orthonormal family of, of complex vectors, then all you have to uh, know is that when you do psi1 inner product with psi, what that is, is psi1 inner product with the sum over i of lambda i psi i, and by linearity, uh, what you have is sum of lambda i psi 1 psi i, and this is 1 if i equals 1 and 0 otherwise. Okay, so you have here, so which means then you have lambda 1. Okay, so you have, for example, here we've just shown this and all of the rest follows in the same way. So what it means is it's a, a very convenient way of finding out the decomposition of uh, certain vectors according to an orthonormal basis. Okay, so let's, let's work it out an example. So let's say you have the following uh, family, Psi1 and Psi2, okay? And what could we ask? We could ask, for example, the decomposition of zero, the vector zero, according to, uh, so what I want is to know lambda one and lambda two such that zero equals lambda one psi one plus lambda two psi two, okay? It's a legitimate question. Uh, so of course I could eyeball it, this is uh, two by two, a linear system it's not very hard but I just want to illustrate the method so what I'll do is I will have uh, psi 1 0 is going to be um, so uh, so it's going to be 1 over square root 2 and then psi 2 0 is also going to be 1 over square root 2. And so what we get is that 0 is 1 over square root 2 psi 1 plus 1 over square root 2 psi 2. And again, we achieve that result without having to solve a linear system. And that's, that's really the, 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 the power of this technique. Okay, now let's talk about what happens when we have a basis psi 1 psi k that is not orthonormal. One natural thing that we may want to do is to find another basis for the same space, but this time that is orthonormal. Okay, and that is achieved in particular with the Gram Schmidt orthogonalization process. So let's see what it does. We assume that we have our vectors here psi 1 psi k. And we're going to create, so v1 to vk is going to be the vectors of our orthonormal basis. But we also use those intermediate ui's vectors. The first one uh, trivially being psi1, and then v1 is simply uh, u1 divided by, so this denominator is just the norm of u1, okay? So u1 divided by its norm is uh, an uh, is a vector of norm 1, okay? So this second step, its only merit is to normalize the vector, okay? To make sure that we have not just a basis of orthogonal vectors, but also uh, a basis for all the vectors of norm 1. Now, the second step uh, involves uh, one more ingredient. So when you create u2, you take psi2 and then negate by the project, this is this part is essentially the projection of psi2 onto uh, the, the span of v1. So what we take is you take uh, whatever part of psi2 is, is decomposes according to v1, then its coefficient is going to be this inner product, and you multiply this by v1 and subtract. The, the, what it does here is it ensures that u2 is orthogonal to v1. And then you create v2 from u2 again just by renormalizing, which is dividing by its norm. Okay, 
So uh, nothing too complicated here. And then u3 is created the same way, so psi3, and then you negate by the projection of psi3 according to v1 and the projection of psi3 according to v2. So in terms of the formula, what it means is you calculate the inner product multiplied by v1, calculate the inner product multiplied by v2 and subtract. The result of that is ensuring that u3 is orthogonal to both v1 and v2. And then v3 is just obtained from u3 by simply renormalizing, okay? So we haven't, uh, we've done the same thing and we continue it. This is the general formula for the uh, operations uh, that were just done, okay? So let's work this out on an example. So our example for, let's take psi1 to be 0 plus 1 plus 2 and let's take, let's take psi 2 equals 2 times 0, okay? So um, we get u2, sorry, u1 very easily, right? Like I said, the first step is a very trivial one. And then u2, sorry, v1 is simply u1 divided by its length, I mean it's Euclidean norm, uh, and that is 1 over square root 3, 0 plus 1 plus 2, okay? So that is the first step, okay? Now second step, okay, how do we proceed? We will calculate u2, this time u2 is slightly more involved because you take psi2 and you have to subtract by the um, the projection, okay, so according to uh, v1, okay, so v1 in a product with psi2 times, and that's going to be times v1, okay, so v1 by psi2. And so let's calculate this, okay? So what's psi2? Psi2 is 2 times the first vector of the canonical basis. Now what is this inner product here? So 2, 0, and then I need to do the inner product with this value. So what I get is 2 over square root 3, 0, inner product with 0, plus 2 over square root 3, 0 by 1, and 2 over square root 3, 0 by 2, okay? And this, in turn, gets multiplied by v1, which is, so this is a scalar, of course, that I just calculated, and now the vector part of this product. So 1 over square root 2, 0, plus 1, plus 2, okay? Now, what is this coefficient here? So this, because we're talking about an orthonormal basis, the canonical basis are orthonormal, so what you have is these two values are 0, why this is 1, okay? So if I expand, what do I get? This is 2 times 0 minus 2 over 6, uh, sorry, uh, 2 over uh, 3, okay, um, 2 over 3 times 0 plus 1 plus 2, okay? And if I uh, regroup my terms, then what do I get here is, uh, so 2 is 6, uh, sorry, 2 is, yeah, 6 over 3, and so we have 4 over 3 times 0 minus 2 over 3 times 1, 
minus 2 over 3 times 2. Okay? Now, this is just u2. Now, I need to calculate v2. Okay? And v2 is u2 divided by its norm. Okay? So, I need to calculate v2. Uh, so, the norm of u2 is going to be, so let's calculate it here. The norm of u2 square, okay, is going to be u2 inner product of itself, and that's going to be 16 over 9 plus 4 over 9 plus 4 over 9, so that is 24 over 9. And so the norm that we're looking for here is going to be, um, so let's uh, give it a, um, a shape that is not necessarily completely obvious, but I'm just anticipating with on the fact that I'm going to have to, um, uh, that I'm going to have to uh, divide by three everywhere. So uh, that's two times square root six, Okay, divided by three. Okay, and now if I multiply, uh, if I multiply, uh, if I divide u two by its norm, then what do I get? So u two divided by the norm of u two is going to be so. Uh, well, it's 1 over, so 3 over 2 square root 6 times 4 over 3 times 0 minus 2 over 3 times 1 minus 2 over 3 times 2, okay? And in this case, what we'll do is this simplifies all of that and this also simplifies this becomes a oh, apologies a2 this simplifies and this simplifies and what i end up with is 1 over square root 6 0 minus 1 minus 2 and this is the vector the second vector of my orthonormal basis and remember my first vector was here okay so this is the end of our sort of intro to the Dirac notation okay most of it was just an excuse to redo certain things that are prerequisite linear algebra prerequisite to this course but working uh, alone uh, with the Dirac notation okay and so um, at first, some people get intimidated, um, uh, but it's just a notation and we'll be reusing it uh, throughout this course. Thank you for your attention.